Hi, everyone. I'm Lawrence from the Google AI team. And I'm here to give you the rundown on the top AI and ML announcements from Google I.O. 2022. We're really excited about the potential for developers using our technologies and machine learning to build intelligent solutions. And we believe that 2022 is the year when AI and ML can become a part of every developer toolbox. And that leads to my first highlight, the ecosystem as a whole. At the I.O. keynotes, we showed our fully open source ecosystem that takes you from end to end with machine learning, all the way from developer tools for managing data to training your models, deploying them to a variety of surfaces from global scale cloud all the way down to tiny microcontrollers, and of course, to monitor and maintain your systems with MLOps. All of this with a common set of accelerated hardware for training and inference, along with open source tooling for responsible AI end to end. You can see a deep dive into the ecosystem in the talk AI and machine learning for developers. We can all agree that responsible and ethical AI is important. But when you want to build responsibly, you do need tooling. We could and we will create a whole video series about these tools. But the great content to watch right now is the talk on the responsible AI review process, where Googlers who worked on projects like the COVID-19 public forecasts or the Celebrity Recognitions APIs will take you step by step through their thought process and how the tools lined up to help them build more responsibly and thoughtfully. If you're just getting started on your journey and you want ML to be a part of your toolbox, you probably have a million questions. Well, to follow the journey of a developer to understand the best offerings from a turnkey API that does the job for you through finding models that will get you part way through customizing and deploying your own models, the wonderful talk from my friend Gus will be a well-lit pathway, so go check it out. If you're a web developer, there's a whole bunch of new updates. From the announcement of a new set of courses taught by Mr. TensorFlow.js himself, Jason Mays, to lots of new models available to web devs, including a selfie depth estimation model that can be used for cool things like a 3D effect in your pictures without needing any kind of extra sensor. Or, 3D pose estimation that allows you to run at a high FPS to get real-time results, allowing you to do things like this, a fully animated character following your body motion in the browser. All this and more in the talk, TensorFlow.js from prototype to production. Check it out. And if you want to build better mobile apps with AI and machine learning, you probably need to understand the ins and outs of getting models to execute on Android or iOS devices, including shrinking them and optimizing them to be power friendly. And there's a battery of new releases from the TensorFlow Lite team to help with quantization, debugging, acceleration on CPU or delegated GPUs, and a whole lot more. Speaking of acceleration, this year at I.O., we introduced the Coral DevBoard Micro. This is a new microcontroller class device with an onboard edge TPU that's powerful enough to run multiple models in tandem. The Coral team have also updated their catalog of pre-trained models with about 40 models now available for you to use on embedded systems without further modification. On the other side of the spectrum, if you want to train large models, you'll need to understand how to shard training and data across multiple processors or cores. So we've released lots of new guidance and updates for model and data parallelism. You can learn all about them, including lessons learned from Google researchers in building large language models at the talk, Tips and Tricks for Distributed Large Model Training. Check it out in the links below. Of course, not all data is big data. And if you're not building giant models, you still need to be able to manage your data. And often, this is where devs will write the most code for ML. So we do want to highlight some ways of making this easier, in particular with Keras and the new preprocessing layers that not only make vectorization and augmentation much easier, but also allow for pre-computation to make your training more efficient, reducing idle time. Learn about it all in the terrific talk about data preprocessing from the creator of Keras, Francois Choyer. And let's not forget MLOps and the open source end-to-end -end pipeline management that you can create with TFX. Check out the talk from Robert Crow, who will help you understand everything from why you need MLOps through managing your process and handling change. You'll see the component model in TFX, 
going from the standard components that give you an end-to-end -end workflow to the new TFX add-ons community that's focused on building new ones. Check it all out at the introduction to MLOps with TFX Talk. But I.O. wasn't just about new releases and talks. If you're inspired by any of what you saw, we also have a boatload of workshops and learning paths that you can dig into to learn in more detail. Check them all out in the links below. So that's it for this roundup of AI and ML at Google I.O. 2022. I hope you've enjoyed, and I would love to hear your feedback when you explore the content. So please leave a comment, like, and share. Thank you.